You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you in another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, we had uh, met Korra. God, I love Korra. I hope we see. I definitely hope we see more of her. And uh, we watched Vool put his foot in his mouth a few times, and now Vithyr has shown up. And well. <sighs> I guess just uh, everyone's just every literally everybody is just gonna come to this uh, to this meat shed to this uh, butcher shop today, and I guess we're gonna get to see everyone. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Everyone's just walking up. Well, you know they're wolves. They need meat. <laughs> I need meat too. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. All right. Hope you guys enjoy. And here we go. All right. Mm. Alarm chain, you're up. All right. Sorry if I seem a little odd. My blood sugar was really low a minute ago. I just had to nom something sweet. Okay, I got some delicious peanut butter bars. Alrighty. Wait, what? Rarely do you see the ward's face gaining free trade skills during their tenure. Let's see face. Rarely do you see wards gaining free trade skills during their tenure. Again, if you say so. Vul mutters defeatedly, and I realize that I must have just gotten busted on something neither of us considered. Maybe I should take him under my wing as well. I could use a paw around the bakery. He'd learn another trade, too. I think butchery is all he can afford. The Black Wolf places an emphasis on the last word, and I swallow heavily. Shit, did we both make a mistake by bringing me here? But Victor is a nice one, isn't he? Considering he's in quite a debt already, he can't afford much anyway, eh? Mel laughs it off and simply looks at me with a kinder smile. Don't worry, I won't let the elders know. I'd better play it off as if he were a butcher after all. No need getting him chained down over a trade skill you forced onto him. Will's expression brightened slightly and my faith in the brown mal got restored. Thank you, Vithir. This really isn't what it looks like. Of course it isn't. The elder, male, the elder wolf waves his paw. We all want the other kin gone as fast as possible, I'm sure. He looks to the black male with a grin. So, about my meat. Yes, let me get that ready for you. Wolf shoves me into the back room and I help him fetch different slabs of meat resting on the shelves and hooks. As we get Vithir's order ready, the black wolf approaches me with a hushed whisper. Our day is near done here, so we need to think of dinner. Is steak and onion pie good with you? Sure. I shrug and he nods with satisfaction. Although my appetite for meat is quite low, I'm not going to bitch about it now. The wolf pats my shoulder as he carries his load back into the shop, and I follow suit. <coughs> no, sorry about that. We place the slabs onto the counter, and Vithir goes through them one by one. Good, good. These will do nicely. And the livers and kidneys. I'll bring them to you on our way back home. Perfect. He claps his paws and reaches out to a small pouch hanging from his belt. The male places a silver octagonal coin on the counter and pushes it towards Vool, but the black male shakes his head. Keep that for now. In turn, you can bake us dinner. Oh? Vithir raises a brow. What have you in mind? I'll give you a cut of steak. If you make that into one of your pies, we'll call it even. Ha ha ha! The older male laughs loudly. Pleasure doing business with you, lad. Alas, take it. I like to keep my ledgers squared. Besides, I wouldn't want to think you're trying to bribe me. He winks playfully, but just like Vool, I'm not sure I find it amusing. What about our dinner? Baking one extra pie is hardly worth a week's supply of meat, Vool. He shakes his head, picking up the entire assortment of cuts. And I got quite a use to baking for that whelp. Keep an eye on him for me, eh? Will do. The black round nods and picks up the coin, watching Vithyr take his leave. I look at it curiously, as it's not like any money I've ever seen. What's this? I finally ask, once we're free to resume a conversation. <clears throat> Vithyr's token. A token? My bemused expression reveals I don't understand what he's talking about. The male sighs and reaches down beneath the back counter to, re to retrieve a small chest. We don't actually use hard currency within the tribe. We barter with those. He flicks the coin. Each wolf has his own personal set. You give them in exchange for services. Oh, an IOU. I utter, through just through satisfied realization. Yeah, you get it. Can you make as many as you like? No. They're made out of true silver, and there's only always a, there's always a specific amount. Hmm. What's that guy? I got some of that peanut butter stuck in my teeth. Okay, there we go. Tribes, tribes, tribes wolves have four. Alphas get six. Elders have the most, each owning eight tokens. Uh, 
What about the chief? I asked curiously. The chief doesn't need any. The entire tribe works for him. True. I nod. What if you run out of your tokens? Then you barter with the ones you have, like this one. He flicks Vithyr's coin yet again and then drops it onto the chest. Huh. Before you ask what happens when a wolf doesn't have any left, it means he's a shitty wolf who doesn't pull his weight. He shuts the chest and pushes it aside. Ouch. I tease. He's really not the one to mince words. He notices my gaze still drooling into the chest and decides to humor me. Very well. I'll let you have a look. He opens it up once again and rummages through the various coins. There's quite a few in there. It seems like the entire village owes him. I watch as his paw picks up several round-shaped tokens, which he then places one by one on the counter. They have embossed edges with a full moon in the middle. However, its surface is etched in such a fashion that it appears dark, just as his moonstone. Here! Those are mine. He states with a smile, and I pick up one to have a closer look. The reverse, sport, the reverse sport's intricate pattern framing his name. Vulgar. You have all six! I mutter with amazement. He clearly wants for nothing. Being a butcher means that wolves need my services more often than I need theirs. Cool. But how do you trade with outsiders? I ask, toying with the tokens. With gold. He shrugs. We do have foreign coins, but they're all held in the tribe's treasury. Each wolf has a claim to, sh to a share based on their station and contribution. Should we need funds to trade outside, we just request them from the chief. The black wolf pauses, looking intently into the distance as if recalling something. Last time I did that was when I bought that dress. I even asked for an advance. It took me two years to repay it. He scoffs, scolding his own foolishness. Damn. I mutter uncomfortably, but he doesn't allow me to linger on it. It's yours now. Just keep in mind that it didn't come cheap. So don't fuck it up doing something stupid in it. He bobs my shoulder teasingly, and I smile, but then my eye drifts to a coin in the chest unlike any other. While the rest is just silver, this one is inlaid with a white stone, a woven paw embossed in the middle of a full moon. He notices I reach for it and smiles with satisfaction as I rub the crest of my own collar. Huh, is this Rannox? I ask needlessly as the reverse disperses any of my doubts. Yep, your wolf is a big spender. His tokens are always scattered to the four winds. Vul sniggers and then gives me a challenging smirk. Currently on your account. But he does pull his weight, I'm sure. I try to brush it off, but it does get me worried. Yeah, he does. Would be a shame if his ward didn't. <clears throat> he clearly jabs at this waste of time, and I simply flick the coin back in. The wolf collects his tokens and places them securely inside the chest. Once he stashed it away, he simply nods towards me. Let's finish with the sa let's finish with the sausages. Ugh. He returns into the back into the back room and Vul places a large tub underneath the grinder. He points to the wheel, and I take my position. With all the meat inside, the gears give a lot of resistance, so I have to take a strong perch with my legs. I strain slightly to get the wheel going, but once it turns, the following rotations require much less force. I can hear the meat and herbs squelch and burp as they go through the, co as through, as they go through the cogs, and eventually a pinkish mince begins to drop into the tub on the other end. Why, why are you so unnerved with Vithyr? Everyone saw me working here. I wasn't unnerved, I was just... He pauses to find a better word, as if it mattered. Other wolves won't dare poke into my affairs or question what I'm doing. Vithir is the only one who does. He's also one of the wolves who can increase your obligations to the tribe based on circumstances. Which he suggested. I cringe a little. I don't think he means to do it, but should he say too much to the chief, we could get into serious trouble. Keep your wits around him. He's friendly, but too close to the source of power for comfort. I nod in understanding. When all the meat went through, the resistance in the gears lets go entirely, and I can turn the wheel freely. It's a signal that we're done, and that, but that's when Vul points to the mortar we abandoned when Vithyr interrupted us. Crush it as finely as you can, he mutters as he douses his hands with moonshine again. The crunching sound of pepper beneath the, pest, beneath the pestle is quite satisfying, and it doesn't take long until all the seeds are turned into a nice powder. Once it's done, the wolf invites me over as he plunges his paws into the mince. Sprinkle it over, as I fold it in. The wolf commands and I nod. I observe him mix the meat by paw, which is just as well as there were quite a large con as there were quite large concentrations of onions and herbs due to our loading ratios. It's quite impressive watching his muscles bulge and strain as he works the mince into an even into an even consistency. The smell is nice too. Such a stark contrast to my earlier task. Once he's done, he scrapes the meat off his paws and nods towards the bottle. I shake it a, I shake it a little, and it's nearly empty. 
I pour the remaining booze over his paws and he washes them throughout. The wolf then takes a squat and with quite an effort lifts the tub back up to dump the contents into the grinder once again. With the contraption filled, he then fixes a nozzle to the front, which reduces the, di the diameter of the feeding tube. I watch as he fills up a bowl with some clear water from the tank and retrieves a bunch of, br a bunch of brined casings from the barrel. He rinses them off from the excess salt water and simply pulls onto the nozzle. That's when he nods towards the wheel. <clears throat> Again, this time with less effort, I turn it, forcing the grinder to work. <clears throat> The meat makes less noise on its passage, and I smile seeing as it squirt, squirts into the casings, filling them up and pushing out a decent-sized sausage. Every now and then, Vul twists the string, separating it into smaller segments and creating a proper chain. It's quite satisfying seeing how it's made. Once a casing is spent, he stops me from turning the wheel and replaces it with another, while depositing a finished string onto a hook. We continue our work for maybe an hour or so, making in total ten sausage chains. Vool eventually collects them onto a long prong, and I have to admire this lovely curtain of wieners that we just made. Lovely curtain of wieners, huh? I'll take them to the smoke room. They'll spend the night there before getting ready tomorrow. I nod and watch the wolf leave. I lean against the table and rest up a bit. My arms hurt a little, especially the upper parts, but not gonna lie, having this much work done does feel good. Much better than being cooped up in the house, that's for sure. The wolf returns momentarily and wastes no time. He places the meat tub beneath the grinder and walks towards the water tank. He gives it an idle poke to gauge the water levels and it resonates la and it resonates loudly. Should be enough. He takes a bowl and opens the tap, allowing the water to gush freely. Once he fills it up, he points toward the gears grind he points towards the grinder again. I'll pour it through the top and you turn the wheel. Gotta clean the machine. <clears throat> sure. I smile and rush eagerly to my station. It doesn't take long, or much effort. The water slushes out into the tub with different bits and pieces that were stuck inside. We repeat it two more times until the water comes out clear and Vul simply disposes of it out the back. If you could brush the floors while I get Vithyr's order ready, we can head back home. <clears throat> um. I nod and fetch the broom. Um. <laughs> um. I mean, mm-hmm. There's not much to sweep, but I make sure not. To, but I make sure not to leave this place worse than I have found it. I reach underneath the table and the, for the grinder, sweeping anything I can find. Eventually, a small heap of dust, onion, and garlic peels forms near the door, and I simply push it outside. Once done, I sigh and admire the clean room. My, what a crazy day. Piglet? Vool calls out, announcing that it's time to leave, and I put the broom back. As I step outside, I notice that most of the wolves have disappeared. The shop fronts are empty or boarded up, and even the smithy's doors are shut. The workday is truly over. <clears throat> Despite my earlier statements, I've worked up quite an appetite. Have to admit, for a whiny little bitch, you did quite well today. Again, a backhanded compliment, but I've learned that by, but I've learned this by now that this is as good as it's going to get. The wolf bends down to pick up the bucket filled with a mixture of dark purple and reddish brown innards. I wince uncomfortably as it sloshes around as we proceed to leave the shop. <clears throat> you can moan all you like, but those are very nutritious. Maybe. I just hope they won't come in handy. I mutter, not because I'm disgusted. To be fair, the pie I had was quite nice. I'm simply worried because Vithir suggested they'll be made into rations for potential search parties should Rannick go missing. The Black Wolf picks up on my slight shift and he reads me like an open book. He'll be fine. And I don't say this lightly, he continues, trying to reassure me. Rannick is one of the few wolves who doesn't need help. I narrow my brows. He's a wolf. What is a wolf without his pack? The male blinks and looks at me with slight confusion, as if I accidentally said something profound. He's all alone out there. Well, worrying about it won't help. And should anything go awry, he bumps into my shoulder. I'll go and find him. You're not the only one who cares. I watch as he tugs on his moonstone. He's my moon brother, after all. If anything should happen, I'll traverse the entire world to find him. I smile, feeling quite comforted by the idea. I definitely would not want to be the one in Vool's path, should he be on a quest to find a loved one. <clears throat> Vithyr! The male calls out as we come to a stop in front of the bakery. Vithyr steps out of his house with a large pie in his paws. Oh, oh that's a big old bulge. It's still steaming as he hands it over to me and the smell makes my mouth water. Should be cool enough to handle. He winks, facing the black wolf. So, that's all you got? Hmm. Vool nods and passes the bucket to the brown male. I suppose it should be enough for a dozen pies if I use some sweat as filler. That's two packs worth. Indeed. Well, hopefully it won't come to that, but who knows. 
Better pre be prepared, eh? My heart sinks a little as the, at the comment, and the wolf, Black Wolf, notices it. Vol only fashes his brows and shoves me slightly. We better get going. It's been a long day. Yes, yes, enjoy. Oh, and Vol, it's nice to see you keep the whelp some company. Just keeping an eye on him, as required. The black male grumbles and Vithyr laughs in clear disbelief, walking off to his house. <clears throat> as we approach the cottage, the smell of the pie teases my nose, and I have to admit, I've worked up quite an appetite. Meat pie does sound good. I haven't had, that one. I had one of those in ages. Shepherd's pie. My god, I love shepherd's pie. Once at the cabin, Vol puts my, pulls my shoulder and causes me to stop. That was a good day's work. Indeed. But before we get settled, let's get your wood restocked. Oh, right. I mumble brutally, not really keen on more chores, but I guess I have to fuel the fire somehow. I jump over the uneven step and approach the porch table to leave the pie there. When I return, Vol has already opened the shed and now picks through the different blocks. Most of it is already cut to size, but we'll get some of the big ones too. He states, chuckling, chucking out different logs. The wolf retrieves an axe and sets up a wood block on a nearby trunk. Here you go. He passes me the chopper. Um, I don't think I've ever done this before. Did you do any? Did you do anything before? He sneers, and I roll my eyes. Nothing to it. You just swing it like the meat cleaver. To think all that hacking was preparing me to chop wood. I simply sigh and arch myself back to take a wide swing. As the blade sinks into the log, my muscles cramp at the sudden stop. I didn't even get in deep. You don't need to swing that hard. He laughs in amusement. You're going to hurt yourself, and then Rannick will be up my ass. Here. He brushes me aside and takes the axe from me. You just hit it enough to wedge it in. Uncharacteristically to his strength, he just pokes the top of the wood enough to get the blade an inch or two. Then you just tap it, and you just tap, and it splits all on its own. See? He demonstrates, and it looks so effortless. Damn! He passes me the hatchet and lets, and lets me try. Indeed, his method requires much less force and is so much easier. I split maybe four or five logs, looking at the slowly growing pile. How many more? I ask, uncertain if I should continue. I say it's enough. You should last, should last you for a day or two. And now that you know your way around the axe, you'll be able to fetch it yourself when needed. I smile and nod in gratitude. He taught me quite a lot, and all, in, and all in one day. I collect the wood as he put the axe away and locks the shed. Once we're ready to go, my stomach makes the most embarrassing rambling sound, causing the wolf to snort. I'm starving. So I hear. When we enter the kitchen, Vul drops the wood near the hearth while I place the pie onto the table. As he arranges the logs in the niche below, I fetch two tankards and rush towards the barrel. Reading my damn mind, piglet. The wolf croons, nodding in approval, and as I dunk them, in, as I dunk them into the dark liquid. With the wheat gone, nearly half the thing is emptied. I return the fizzing mugs to the table and get two plates set up. Once Vool is done, he brushes off his paws and seats himself comfortably, watching as I rustle about. I could get used to that. No wonder Rannick's so set on you. He snickers, watching as I cut the pie into two, into two and place a half on the plate in front of him. If you act nice, I could even give you a massage. I tease and his ears perk up, getting slightly red on the inside. Hmm. <laughs> He's the touchy one. You keep your paws to yourself. He scoffs, and I cannot help but chuckle. Both of them are easy to fluster. Now that Verissa made me aware of Rannick's game, it seems you can play it with anyone. We sit like this for a while, me digging into the pie and Vool trying to regain his composure. If someone's so tough, it's easy to ruffle his fur in, the awkward, in an awkward way. Eventually, he lets go of his scowl and also joins in the meal. Considering he hasn't eaten since yesterday, I'm surprised he's not ravenous. I'm devouring the pie with large swigs of the fork. It does hit the spot and pairs excellently with the beer. Here you go. You've earned it. Vool flicks something across the table. He clanks merrily the entire length until I grab it just before it falls off the edge. What's this? I mutter, taking a closer look. It's Rennick's token. Once he's back, you'll be able to give it to him, to pay off his IOU should you wish. He jests and I furl my brows. Of course I'll give it back to him. Good pet. Maybe I should get one. He proposes teasingly, but quickly snorts it off. Then again, I do not have debts around to be worked out off like your master. Ugh! I walk off to the cupboard and place the coin in one of the drawers. As I return to the table, I notice Vool's tail swaying idly from side to side. Despite almost lethargic movement, it's the most animated I've ever seen it. He clearly enjoyed spending the day together, that's for sure. I take my seat with a, heart, with a hardly contained smile and he notices it, giving me a confused look. What are you grinning at? Uh, nothing. 
Oh, hold up. Got some hair in my eye. Get out of my hair eye! I mean, God, oh my God, get out of my eye hair. <laughs> oh, okay. I shake my head, continuing with my share of the pie. I guess he really likes company, but just doesn't know how to enjoy it. So, what's your plan for the rest of the day? I ask between each mouthful. Pups at you until it's time to head off to the feast. I assume I'm still not welcome there. It's better you keep to yourself while Rannick's gone. Safer that way. He shrugs, taking an idle sip. Yeah. Also, you need to get some rest. The wolf nods towards the bedroom. I'll be waking you up same time tomorrow. Oh, joy! I snigger and we remain silent for a short moment. Vul downs a gulp of the ale and checks the bottom of the mug. I'm about to offer to refill it for him when he stands up and walks towards the barrel himself. Alright, I'll pause it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This episode made me hungry. I want some, I want some meat pie. Some meat pie and some delicious ale to go with it. Ah, oh, it sounds good! Oh, guys, I'm not okay. I'm, okay, guys, I'm gonna go eat now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!